The sunnah, as mentioned before, is to wear the best of your clothes on the day of Eid. Because this is a day of celebration. So you don't put on something that is old or something that is used. No, you try to pick the newest and the most expensive and the best of your clothes for that day, showing your joy and happiness in celebrating the Eid and in attending the prayer. Of course, this is for men. As for women, they should not show this. They should not expose their beauty and the garments because they are wearing what is considered to be a habaya or the uh, over jacket or whatever that covers their beauty and the, uh, uh, conceals their beauty and the garments they are wearing. But of course they do wear the best, the newest clothes, but they don't show it to strange strangers, to strange men, etc. The sunnah in attending Eid prayer, as the Prophet used to do, والسلام, is to go in or through one route and choose another one when going back home. And what is the justification? Well, some people say, say that so that people would see two different people going in and out. And this would give the impression that there are a lot of Muslims. If they all go from one route and come from the same route, the other routes would not notice this and they would not notice that there are a lot of Muslims. It's a justification. Some folks say that this gives you chance to greet Muslims all around you. So if you go through this route, you say salam alaikum to all those who you see. And when you come back from another route, you say and greet the others who you did not see uh, uh, on the first route. And there are other justifications, but regardless, as long as the Prophet did it, والسلام, I'm willing to do it without even knowing why he did it. Among the rituals that a Muslim should offer during the day of Eid is the slaughtering of the sacrifice. And this is a highly recommended sunnah. And some scholars went to the extent of making it mandatory, but to those who can afford it. So, Shaykh Islam bin Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on his soul, say that, says that if a person is financially capable, it becomes obligatory upon him. But if he's not, or he has debts on him, then it is not obligatory, it's not mandatory, he can skip it. Unfortunately, a lot of the Muslims nowadays are capable of slaughtering a sheep, of slaughtering this sacrifice, but they choose to ignore that. They choose not to do it. They're just stingy. They don't want to spend money. And this is not the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. One should offer this sacrifice. And if you look at Islam, there are certain cases where a person is obliged or is recommended to offer a slaughtering as a sacrifice. For example, we have this sacrifice which is called Udhiyah. And it is specially designed for those who did not go for Hajj. So if I did not go for Hajj, I slaughter this in my place. Those who are in Hajj would slaughter something that is called Hadi, which is sort of a gift and sacrifice to Allah Azza wa It's the same thing. And those who make a mistake or do not fulfill their obligation in Hajj would slaughter something that is called Fidya, compensation or expiation. And a person when he gets a newborn, he would slaughter two sheep for a baby boy or one sheep for a baby girl. And this sheep, when we offer Udhiyah on the day of Eid, we can slaughter it on the 10th day which is the first day of Eid, second day, third day, or fourth day before sunset. These are all four days for slaughtering. It has to be a perfect sheep. It cannot be one-eyed. 
where it's obvious. It cannot be limping. It cannot should not be skinny. It should not be ill, where it's apparent that it is ill. One should choose the best, the most valuable, and offer it as a sacrifice to Allah Azza wa Jal. The Sunnah is for you to sacrifice. If you don't know how to sacrifice, if you don't know how to slaughter, well, give it to someone else who does this. The Sunnah is that you divide it into three parts, a third for you to eat, a third for you to give as a gift, and a third to pay for charity. You may not sell anything of that sheep, not even the skin. You may not give the skin to the, uh, a butcher as compensation or as fee. All of this is for Allah Azza wa Jal. It should be only for Allah. And finally, you should spread an atmosphere of jubilance, of jubilation, of happiness, of joy among your children, among your family. You should try your very best to make that day a happy day, a beautiful day, a day to remember. Because this was the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And as stated before, these four days of Al-Hajj, the, day, the tenth day, the first day of Eid, 11th, 12th, and 13th, they are known as, as the Prophet tells us, they are days of drinking, of course, drinking water and juice, not drinking intoxicants. They are days of drinking, eating, and remembering Allah. It is forbidden for a Muslim to fast these days, with exception to pilgrims in certain cases, but for us as residing in, in our cities or not attending the Hajj, it is completely forbidden for us to fast. This is all the time that I'm allowed to speak, and until we meet next time, fi amin Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.